Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal. I want to talk to you today about Dupuytren's contractures. Now, this is a topic that I get a lot of questions about uh, on my YouTube channel. I thought, you know, I would address it because just so much talk about it and, and how to manage it and so many people have it. A lot of people even have it, but don't know that they have it yet. Um, so what is Dupuytren's contractures? Well, a Dupuytren's contracture is when the tendons in the palm of the hand start to scar down, and sometimes they'll even scar down to the skin or the soft tissues around it. And the fingers, typically the fourth and fifth, but the third can get involved, and even the index finger can get involved. Um, but typically the outer ones will start to stiffen up and start to scar down like this, and it'll get to a point where it's even very incapacitating uh, and not even be able to put a glove on or even put your hand into your pocket. They can be very painful uh, and sometimes not that painful. But when they first start, what you might notice is that your fingers won't bend backwards like this very well, so you'll get you know really stiff like that. You might notice a little bit of puckering or little dimples uh, near the palm of the hand, especially on the outside here. And you'll notice that when you straighten out the fingers, you might get these streaks of white where uh, your fingers start to blanch quite a bit. And those are common signs of Dupuytren's contractors. Um, you know, some of the ways to treat Dupuytren's is to heat up the hand. I like to have folks massage those tendons and kind of break up that underlying scar tissue. Some people are more susceptible to getting this than others, um, but when you get it, the key is to prevent it from getting worse. That is super important because once you get it and it's fully contracted and all scarred down, you really can't loosen that up unless you have a surgical intervention. Um, so I have people massage it. I have people stretch and I have videos on how to do that also. You know, simple stretching like this just to keep it mobile, keeping the fingers moving. But one of the other big problems that we see with Dupuytren's is that when we sleep at night, we get into this fetal position. We curl the fingers up for several hours. It could be six to nine hours of, you know, sleeping or being in a curled position or even during the day you may have your hands just kind of in this position if you're driving a lot um, or doing other activities so the more you keep them bent the more those tissues will stay tight and contracted and not work really well so at night one of the things you could do is get a very simple you know this is a, a finger immobilization splint okay this is from braceability um, not that expensive and it works wonders you can do them on different fingers so you can tie these two together these two together these two together and the nice thing about this little brace is it has a moldable bar inside so you can accommodate you know if there is some angle in there and you can't get the fingers too straight it might be too painful you can put a little bit of a curve in there the whole idea here is to be able to keep those fingers straightened out all night long so that they don't fall into this forward bent position. So I'm just going to snug this brace up here or splint so that you can see what it looks like. So essentially now keeping those fingers nice and straight um, so that they don't fall into that curved position. This splint is super comfortable. It's nice and soft um, and the pads, you know, fit really nicely. And again, it's adjustable. Um, so wearing this at night can help prevent that, uh, that clawing type of effect. And, uh, you know, you can even use this for finger fractures or sprains and strains and that type of thing. So a great multi-purpose um, splint um, for the uh, treatment and, uh, and management of Dupuytren's contractors. Now, not all people will be able to um, take care of their Dupuytren's themselves. If it continues to progressively get worse, you definitely should see an orthopedic surgeon to help uh, with that. Um, if you're looking to get this particular splint, we'll have some uh, links in the show notes for you so you can have easy access to it and uh, hopefully help to manage yourself uh, early on and uh, you know prevent surgery and, and other procedures that um, are just much more expensive and uh, higher risk to uh, manage. So if you have any questions, please uh, put those questions in the comment section of the show notes here today. And uh, again, if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.